Greetings chess friends, my name is Robbie and it's my pleasure to bring you this little chess video and I'd like to talk about our thought process and what governs our thought process during a game of chess and I'd like to introduce you to a very very good concept that I first came across by studying the work of international master Alexander Bangiev and he termed it square strategy theory and it's not a very uh, complicated uh, theory at all in fact it relies on its basis in it relies as its basis on color complexes now international master bangiev he states that there are certain squares which have an inherent strategic value throughout the entire game of chess and these colour complexes take their names from the four uh, squares in the centre for example we have the E4 colour complex we have the D4 colour complex we have the E5 colour complex Whoops. and we have the D5 colour complex And even before we have moved a chess piece, we can see that there are certain uh, conclusions we can draw from looking at these complexes. For example, let's take the E4 colour complex. Already we can see that this square here is weak. It's defended only by the Queen, and the Queen is a very poor defender. If we draw the lines again. You can see that this square here is weak because it's defended only by the king and the king is a very poor defender. So what a chess player has to do is he sets up his particular colour complexes and he seeks to defend those complexes of his own and to attack those of his opponent. Now it seems very very complicated but it, in fact it is very very simple and it's my hope that this little video here will explain in real practical terms how this method can be used to identify not only weak squares but the pieces which defend those squares. Now I provide this example of a little chess game I played on the free internet chess server, a blitz game against my opponent who I think was rated roughly 1500 and I of course I was unrated this was the first game I had actually played and I cite it because I, I really want you to understand the thought process behind these moves and why they were made okay my opponent opened with e4 and he's immediately he's setting up the e4 color complex I made the move c5 because I want to set up the e5 color complex and this these squares here are an extension of that so I played c5 my opponent played Knight f3 seeking to set up the d4 color complex with this move here possibly and I played d6 setting up the e5 color complex my opponent played d4 challenging my, comp my, my e5 complex I took I took now let's look at this position just for a moment. The e4 complex has weaknesses. This pawn of course is undefended. This pawn of course is defended only by the queen. And the queen as we know is a very poor defender. And if we look at the inner squares, 
This pawn here is defended only by the king. So these are all good and legitimate targets. I of course chose knight f6, attacking this undefended pawn. And he of course played knight c3. And here I determined to strengthen my e5 complex by playing the move g6 planning to put my bishop on g7 and he played this move and it's quite an interesting move from the point of view is that of course it attacks weak squares in my d5 complex but I can defend against that easily and I played the blocking move knight d7 he castled and I immediately challenged this bishop, which is in my territory. Bishop went back. I played uh, bishop g7, strengthening my e5 color complex. And he played the move e3. And then I castled. Let us take a look at the position just for a moment. Let's look at the e4 color complex. We can see that it has weaknesses. This white square here is defended only by the king. This is attacked once and defended once. And let's look at the d4 complex. Well, it doesn't have any really inherent weaknesses yet but as soon as this bishop moves this will be weak so let's see what happened bishop moved and I played knight e5 my idea of course is to bring the knight to c4 and put pressure on the d4 color complex And my opponent went back with his bishop. The idea of this move here is really to provide a basis for this knight coming into c4. As we have already said, the d4 color complex has weaknesses which we wish to exploit. Now this is a really interesting move. It strengthens the e4 complex but it weakens the d4 complex. This bishop here has no defender, and this pawn here has no defender. Bishop uh, b7, putting pressure on the e4 complex. And my opponent played a positionally disastrous move, f4. Now, not only did it weaken the d4 complex when it moved to f3, it has now weakened the e4 complex. This square here has one defender, the king. The king is a very poor defender. This square here is attacked not only once, but twice and these weaknesses means that we are going to try to employ an initiative against the e4 color complex and these white squares and in order to do that what will make our life much much easier is if we can get rid of the pieces which defend this color complex for example this bishop here and this knight here. So these are legitimate targets. Now if we look at the d4 color complex also, it's fairly easy to see that this bishop has no defender and this pawn has no defender. So if we can get a knight into c4, it's fairly easy to see that it, the exchange of this bishop 
will be almost forced. And this is in fact what transpires. 94. Practically forcing the exchange of the light square bishop. And the bishop exchanges itself for the knight. And already we can see we are beginning to infiltrate this light squared colour complex, the E4 complex. Okay. The king moved and we've already identified these weaknesses. It's time play knight takes e4 and we can see that already the e4 complex is beginning to crumble knight takes e4 and bishop takes e4 and as soon as this bishop enters into this complex unopposed becomes a monster and c3 was played now we practically own the e4 colour complex. Let's take a look at the d4 complex. You can see that this square here is unprotected and this square here is unprotected. So we immediately begin targeting these weaknesses. Queen d2, and I'm not entirely sure this was the most accurate move I played, but it seemed to me to target this colour complex because it allowed my opponent to play knight e6. Okay, queens were exchanged. And my opponent chopped the rook. Now the most accurate move of course was to take this weakness here and um, g2 but it was a blitz game and I was caught up in the heat of battle and I chopped the, the knight back. Just a reactionary move. And my opponent played this move my bishop back, targeting of course this weakness in the d4 complex and the pawn fell. And at a, a nice time after this And of course, I have an overwhelming position. Now, it may be argued that these weaknesses would have been apparent to any discerning chess player anyway. However, thinking in terms of colour complexes really ties our mind down to the position and the search for weaknesses and this is a very uncomplicated game however there are much much more complicated positions where you need to identify targets and weaknesses and I think of really viewing it in terms of colour complexes whoops, really helps us to do that so if you're interested you should um, really check out the work of international master Alexander Bangiev and his square strategy theory. It's a very useful tool, particularly for the middle game, in uh, finding and identifying targets. So that concludes this little video. Uh, I really, once again, thank you for taking the time and I wish you well with your own chess. Kind regards to you and yours, Robbie.